So let us come and worship our Lord, shall we? Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that was led to the slaughter, and like sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 12 verses 2 to 3 says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So as we consider those couple of verses, a few verses, let's bow before our Lord in prayer. <coughs> Lord, we come before you again, and we are reminded of your greatness and your majesty and your splendor, your great plan of salvation, which we read about in the book of Isaiah. We see, O oh Lord, that, um, that Jesus, the one that uh, you, uh, uh, you ensured was born and, uh, and grew and lived and to be the, the one who would be the sacrifice upon that cross of Calvary. Yet, Lord, through the agonies of, of uh, leading up to that time, he could see the joy of the outcome. And part of that, Lord, is the fact that we are here as your people. And your people, right across the face of this earth through the ages, have been worshipping you and glorifying you and exalting you, the living God. We thank you so much that we have uh, been known by you and have come to know you. And that we understand that you are the great I am. There is none like you. You are the Almighty. O oh Lord, you are all-powerful, ever-knowing and ever-present. That's far beyond our comprehension. As we look at your creation and see your glory revealed in it, it's still something which uh, truly amazes us. Uh, the greatness, the majesty and the splendor of it, and the intricacies of every little thing. Lord, we are, we are certainly so appreciative of our God and uh, that you, O oh Father, out of your great wisdom, uh, planned this work of salvation through Jesus upon that cross of Calvary to take our place, that you could bring us to yourself through his blood shed, his body given, and draw us into your presence, that you, O oh Lord, would make it that you would reconcile us to yourself. And Lord, we can truly come before you knowing that you are our Heavenly Father. We are so blessed. And then on top of that, O oh Father God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit, whom you've given to each one of us who are in the Lord Jesus, to keep us for that day when you'll take us to yourself. And we live in a world full of troubles and difficulties, Lord, and yet you keep us from these, pro these problems. And eventually, Lord, that time will come when Jesus comes back, and we look forward to that time. But in the meantime, Lord, may we worship you and glorify you and honour you, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, always. And as we come this day, specifically, O oh Lord, we want to uh, uh, clearly honour you and bless you in that most precious name, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Let's stand and sing praise to our Lord. We're looking at... Uh, at uh, number 50 in our mission praise, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Number 50.
forever you shall keep it as a feast seven days you shall eat unleavened bread on the first days you shall remove leaven out of your houses for if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day that person shall be cut off from Israel on the first day you shall hold a holy assembly and on the seventh day a holy assembly no work shall be done on those days but what everyone needs to eat, uh, that alone may be prepared by you. Hang on, we have one more part. Right? <coughs> 2020, sorry. Uh, verse 17. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I bought you, bought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore it shall, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month, from the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twentieth, the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leaven. In all your dwelling places, you shall eat unleavened bread. Amen. And that gives us an introduction into the account of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And by the grace of God, we'll be able to have a good look at that. But let's just bow before our Lord and give thanks, shall we? Now, Father, we do thank you, first of all, that as we look back into the Old Covenant, into the Old Testament, we see there where you introduced these things that pointed forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for them. It gives us a deeper understanding into the significance uh, of our, our dear Saviour, all that he had to do for us. And so, Father God, we truly are thankful that we have a Saviour, who, uh, who has uh, made it possible for us to be redeemed, to be brought back into your presence, to, uh, Lord, to be restored to you. And we are truly blessed, and we're so thankful, Father God, that uh, each and every day, uh, Father, you keep us, each one, until that day, 
when Jesus comes again. Father, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're reminded that as we gather around this table today, that we are to have examined ourselves. Help us, O oh Father, to be mindful of the seriousness of sin and the, uh, the, the amazing work and the cost of forgiveness in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, too, that as we think of these things, we know that we live in a world where there is much darkness and we thank you that you have called us out of the darkness of this world into your marvellous light and we are truly blessed. So Father, thank you for all your provision in relation to the work of salvation and we thank you Father God that each day you continue to provide our daily needs, those things, those temporal needs which so often Lord we uh, just take for granted but we do thank you so much that you are God who provides every good and perfect thing and continue to do so, we pray, O oh Father God. And we give you thanks and praise, O oh Father, and ask you to look over and keep each one of us. And I pray your blessing upon each one here this day, Father God, that you may be graciously dealing in the lives of each of your people here. Thank you once again. Hear our prayers. We bring them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. So you'll be waited upon for your gifts and tithes and offerings for the Lord's work. Praise to our Lord, 673. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. 673.
going to bring us to our reading from Luke's Gospel and prayer. Thank you. Reading now from the Gospel portion of Luke, chapter 22, starting at verse 1. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now the feast of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the scribes were seeking how they might put him to death, for they were afraid of the people. And Satan encouraged into Judas, who was called, entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonging to the number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. They were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began seeking a good opportunity to betray him to them apart from the crowd. Then came the first day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, so that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room. Prepare it there. And they left and found everything just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. May the Lord bless this word to our understanding. And we'll now come before the Lord in a prayer of intercession. Let's pray. Loving Father, we do thank you for this wonderful time that we can worship you, where we can bring to you the individual petitions of our loved ones here in our, our assembly, our, our family. Lord, as we approach the Lord's table this morning, we, we praise your name giving you thanks, but also we're reminded of the unity that it brings one another as brothers and sisters and adopted children of you. So, Father, we want to commend to you our brothers Keith, Lord, and also Jocelyn. We think of those who are enduring the, the trials of old age, and we ask that you might be with them and give them comfort in these times. For Lord, many of us can relate to a lot of the afflictions of age and also those of us who now live in this fallen world. And we pray for Nell that also cares for him. So Father, we also pray for our brother Lex, our elder, and we ask that you might give him peace and physical strength, Lord, and, and comfort. And we pray also for Wendy, that you might give her peace and comfort, Lord, Father, we pray for our sister Marlene and we thank you that we can see a resolution with the doctors and they have a plan. And we pray that you might grant them wisdom and, and skills that they might be efficacious to healing her. And we pray that in the meantime that Marlene and Bill might find comfort and peace knowing that you are watching over them in all things. Lord, we pray for our brother Bob and his wife Colleen. Lord, they, they miss being here with us and we miss them as we miss all of our loved ones here. And we pray that you might give them comfort and strength also, Father. Lord, we pray also for our brother Ian and his wife Meryl. We ask that you might touch their hearts, that they might know your presence in a special way. And Father, we want to lift up Jan as she too is dealing with health issues, and we ask that you might give her strength and peace and our beloved brother Keith with her. Lord, we thank you for the tender mercies and the blessings that you give us in, in doctors and nurses and medical staff. But more than that, Lord, we have you, our advocate, and the source of all peace. Lord, you were tempted in trial in all things, yet without sin. You know what each and every one of us individually is going through. And we pray that you might bless us for your glory's sake. We pray for all the wonderful ministries that you've given to us 
uh, blessed us with here in this place of Nambour Prezi. And we ask that everything that we do might diminish us as living sacrifices to magnify you. So, Father, we thank you for all these tender mercies and we ask that you might be glorified in all these things and watch over us. And also, Father, for those loved ones we have overseas who are in the persecuted nations. Uh, we think of Jared and, uh, and, uh, and with uh, his family. And, Lord, we pray that you might bless their work over in Germany. And, Lord, as we've read even in this bulletin this morning about the uh, horrible situations of genocide and persecution, might our brothers and sisters over in that place be comforted and look forward to the glorious day when we are all together worshipping you in Christ without any afflictions. We think of our beloved friends and family over in Uganda and Morocco, and we, I, we rejoice, Lord, that we see that you take these people and use them as your faithful servants. And even though they've been sacrificed and martyred, we can see the thousands of souls that have been saved as they've come to Christ by your grace. And we pray that that might be a, a wonderful honour to your glorious name. So we pray for all our loved ones around this globe, that you might be with them, glorify yourself for the honour and majesty of your own holy name. Bless us now as we continue in the Lord's name. Amen.